This is the life by Annie Dillard. Any culture tells you how to live your one and only life, to wit, as everyone else does. Probably most cultures prize, as ours wisely does, making a contribution by working hard at work that you love, being in the know, an intelligent, gathering a surplus, and loving your family above all, and your dog, your boat, bird watching. Beyond those things, our culture might specialize in money, and celebrity, and natural beauty. These are not universal. You enjoy work and will love your grandchildren, and somewhere in there you die. Or you take the next tribe's pigs in thrilling raids. You grow yams. You trade for televisions and hunt white plum birds. Everyone you know agrees. This is the life. Perhaps you burn captives. You set fire to a drunk. Yours is the human struggle, or the elite one to achieve. Whatever your own culture tells you, to publish the paper that proves the point, to progress in the firm and gain high title and salary, stock options, benefits, to get the loan to store the beans till their price rises, to elude capture, to feed your children or educate them to a feather edge, or to count coup or perfect your calligraphy, to eat the king's deer or catch the poacher, to spare the seal, intimidate the enemy, and a be a big man or beloved woman, and die respected for the pegs or the title or the shoes. Not a funeral. Forget funeral. A big birthday party, since everyone around you agrees. Since everyone around you agrees, ever since there were people on earth that land is value, or labor is value, or learning is value, or title, necklaces, degree, murex shells, or ownership of slaves. Everyone knows beasts sting and ghosts haunt, and giving your robes away humiliates your rivals. That the enemies are barbarians, that wise men swim through the rock of the earth, that houses breed filth, airships attract airplanes, tornadoes punish, ancestors watch, and you can buy a shorter stay in purgatory. The black rock is holy, or the squirrel, or the pangolin is holy, the quetzal is holy. This tree, water, rock, stone, cow, cross, or mountain, and it's all true. The Red Sox, or nothing at all is holy, as everyone intelligent knows. Who is your everyone? Chess masters scarcely surround themselves with motos cross racers. Do you want aborigines at your birthday party, or are you serve yak butter tea? Popular culture deals not in its distant past or any other past or any other culture. You know no one who longs to buy a mule or be named to court or thrown into a volcano. So the illusion, like the visual field, is complete. It has no holes except books you read and soon forget. And death takes us by storm. What was that? That life? What else offered? If for him it was contract bridge, if for her it was copyright law, if for everyone it was and is an optimal mix of family and friends, learning, contribution, and joy of making, and ameliorating, what else is there, or was there, or will there ever be? What else is a vision or fact of time and the peoples it bears issuing from the mouth of the cosmos, from the round mouth of eternity, in a wide and particular utterance, in the complex weave of this utterance like fabric, in its infinite domestic interstices, the centuries and continents and classes dwell. Each people know only its own squares in the weave, its wars and instruments and arts and also the starry sky. Okay, and then what? Say you scale your own weft and see time's breadth and the length of space. You see the way the fabric both passes among the stars and encloses them. You see in the weave nearby and aslant farther off. The people's various scandalize or exalt in their squares. They work on their projects. They flake spear points, hoe plant. They skill all rocks or another. They prepare sacrifices as we hear and now work on our projects. What? Seeing this spread multiply infinitely in every direction, would you do differently? No one could love your children more. Would you love them less? Would you change your project? To what? Whatever you do, it has likely brought delight to fewer people than either Contract Bridge or the Red Sox. However hypnotized you and your people are, you will be just as dead in their war. 
our war. However dead you are, more people will come. However many more people come, your time and its passions, and yourself and your passions, weigh equally in the balance with those of any dead who pulled water wheel poles by the Nile or Yellow Rivers, or painted their foreheads black, or starved in the wilderness, or weighed sit from di- disease then or now. Our lives and our deaths count equally. Or we must abandon one man, one vote, dismantle democracy, and assign six billion people an importance of life ranking from one to six billion, a ranking whose number decreases, like gravity, with the square of the distance between us and them. What would you do differently? You up on your beanstalk, looking at scenes of all peoples at all times and all places. When you climb down, would you dance any less to the music you love, knowing that music to be a provisional as a bug? Somebody has to make jugs and shoes to turn the soil. Fish. If you descend the long rope ladders back to your people and time in the fabric, if you tell them what you have seen, and even if someone cares to listen, then what? Everyone knows times and cultures are plural. If you come back a shrug, sh- shrugging relativist or tongue-tied absolutist, then what? If you spend hours a day looking around, high astraddle the wrap or woof of your papal's wall, then what new wisdom can you take to your grave for worms to untangle? Well, maybe you will not go into advertising. Then you would know your own death better, but perhaps not dread it less. Try to bring people up the wall, carry children to see it to what end? Fewer golf courses? What is wrong with golf? Nothing at all. Equality of wealth? Sure. How? The woman watching sheep over there. The man who carries embers in a pierced clay ball. The engineer. The girl who spins wool into a yarn as she climbs. The smelters. The babies learning to recognize speech in their own languages, the man whipping a slave's slave back, the man digging roots, the woman digging roots, the children digging roots. What would you tell them? And the future people, what are they doing? What excitement sweep peoples here and there from time to time? Into a muddy river they go, into the trenches, into the ca- caves, into the mines, into the granary, into the sea and boats. Most humans who were ever alive lived inside one single culture that never changed for hundreds of thousands of years. Archaeologists scratched their heads at so conservative and static a culture. Over there, the rain fell. They are starving. There, the caribou fell. They are starving. Corrupt leaders take the wealth. Not only there, but here, rust and smut spoiled the rye. When pigs and cattle starve or freeze, people die soon after. Disease empties a sector, a billion sector. People look at the sky, and at the other animals. They make beautiful objects, beautiful sounds, beautiful motions of their bodies beating drums and lines. They pray. They toss people in peat bogs. They help the sick and injured. They pierce their lips, their noses, ears. They make the same mistake despite religion, written language, philosophy, and science. They build. They kill. They preserve. They count and figure. They boil the pot. They keep the embers alive. They tell their stories and gird themselves. Will knowledge you experience directly make you a Buddhist? Must you for fight excitement proceed? To what end? Say you have seen something. You have seen an ordinary bit of what is real, the infinite fabric of time that eternity shoots through, and time's soft skin, peoples working and dying under slowly shifting stars. Then what?